everyone welcome to the class how are you all how is life how is everything is going on so my dear students what we are going to today is yes so exactly we are going to start our new chapter and the chapter name you can see here that it is the sorting materials into groups that how we can sort all of the materials which is present in our surrounding um with the help of some of the properties okay we'll see that that what kind of properties and as my dear student we have completed already our first chapter that is the fiber to fabric and i hope you all know exactly that what chapter contains that the last chapter so today we are going to study a very new chapter and a very interesting chapter student and i hope you will find it out very interesting okay so oh yeah so before starting our session i would like to introduce myself so my name is arushi sharma and i'll be your chemistry teacher and yes we are going to start this chapter now okay so let's start it so my dear student first of all it is very important to know about that what the chapter is exactly like what the chapter is trying to tell you like what they want to teach you through this chapter like in the last chapter from the fiber to fabric what you have come to know that you have come to know about the natural fibers are there and some of the production you have gone through so that's how they want to tell you this thing but from this chapter what they want to tell you exactly because behind each and every chapter there is some purpose exactly and it's not like that uh, uh, what i can say the purpose which can help you exactly yeah purpose is of the study and as well as getting the good marks is there but the main purpose so that your knowledge will get enhanced so my dear student as you can see that there is a girl like you can see that she is a girl and she is having these three boxes one two and three she is having three boxes and she is separating all of the material like if you can see in this box she has kept all of the vegetables vegetables and fruits exactly like in this she has kept all of these things but if i can see that in this she has kept the bottles okay and in this if i can say she is having the paper kind of material paper material exactly student so what she is doing she is sorting all of these materials into different different boxes according to their similar properties as you can see student these bottles which are present here all of these are of similar type so she is separating them in one box and she is separating all of these paper material in one box and vegetable and fruits in one box now you will say ma'am why she is doing this see my student like we are present in a in this surrounding and we are having so so many thing like you are like if i ask you that you are sitting in your room so what things you can observe you can say ma'am i am having table chair bed curtains walls uh, exactly all of these things are in your room na so my dear student it is very important to classify the uh, classify the materials into the groups so that you will easily understand that okay that what particular kind of material relates to which kind of property fine students if you are sitting somewhere and if i give you so many material and if i ask you that to sort all of these like you have to fill and i am just giving you three boxes and you have to sort all of these so what you will do you will try to pick out the things and you will try to manage all these things in such a way that all of the material which are having the same kind of nature you will pick them and put up in the one box exactly so that it will be easy for you for example student whenever you shift your house like you are going somewhere and uh, like do you are shifting your home from one place to another place so what happens student have you ever seen like your like how your mother did like how she managed packing because the stuff in our house <laughs> you can imagine like lots of thing are there and i can say this thing the shifting is a painful thing <laughs> oh my god it's a rhyming shifting is a painful thing good <laughs> you can see that i am becoming a poet uh, in front of you <laughs> why because you have to like you have to pack all of your material or and you have to be very careful are ki it's of glass uh, and it is our books and these are our clothes and we have to manage all of these things and after that you have to go to another house and you have to uh, arrange all of these things again so you can imagine that things are the all are very like uh, it require lots of efforts i think so like you are a very small child so you don't have to work but you can imagine the condition 
condition of your teacher that she <laughs> like i'm the elder one in my house so i have to do all of the work exactly so my dear student like when your mother did packing or when she does packing have you ob ever observed like she has she is having so big big carton exactly but what she did like she put all of the clothes in one box she pull up, put all of the box like your books and uh, like everything books copies in one box she put all of the boxes and uh, like a uh, kitchen material in one box she put all of the other materials into the one box so you can see like she is dividing all of them on the basis of their properties if you keep the uh, clothes with the kitchen material so you can see whether it can be mixed with salt uh, or like with the other spices and your clothes will get uh what i can say damaged so that's how student sorting is very important on the basis of their properties so that's why student whenever you have seen your mother so you have already seen that she will get all of the things in one one boxes and depending upon the type of the boxes for example student whenever like your television you are getting so the television has to be packed in a complete box so you can't keep the television with your books or something like that so that's how we do the sorting of the material depending upon on the properties of the material exactly so that's the point of view of this chapter and now you will see different different properties and that's how you can differentiate the material from each other okay students fine so now let's start with it so that is why this girl is separating all of the material depending upon their different properties and you can see like she is doing a very great job because she has seen all of the things and she is keeping all of the fruits and vegetable in one box all of the bottles in the one box she is not mixing anything so that's why she is doing a very good work exactly okay so now moving ahead so these are the topics which we are going to cover like sorting on the basis of material okay properties of material like what are the properties of the material on which like on the basis of them we can classify the different different type of material exactly so these are the properties like appearance like by looking at the material you will come to know okay this is the same type and we will keep it luster hardness solubility i'll tell you each and everything okay so first of all sorting on the basis of material so my dear student you can see we are having so many material like metal is there plastic wood paper glass clay rock we are having so many things in our surrounding like we have so so many different different type of object like if we start making any list it is not going to be end at any point exactly you you agree with me na like if i ask you <laughs> like start making the list of the topics uh, oh sorry of the objects which you which you can see in your surrounding you'll say ma'am what are you asking it is not going to be end at any point so that's why student we are having different different type of properties like some something will be rough something will be smooth or something will be soft so all these are the properties of the material because so you can say that we are having so different objects because of their different properties exactly something could be rough something can be smooth and something can be soft so that's how student you can divide all of them on the on the basis of their property for example like whenever in your winter season we wear woolen clothes but is student what happens sometimes that the some kind of woolen is very soft in nature and some kind of woolen cause itchiness to the body <laughs> it happened with me so what i'll do that i i separate all of them that i'm going to wear just only this soft kind of material not this one so i'm separating both of them on the basis of their property na so that's how they we are surrounded with so many object that it is very important like we have to separate them exactly not like as any other like we are sitting one day and we want to separate all of these thing upon the property try to understand the concept of this chapter like they want to tell you the property that what type of properties you can think and you can separate the material from each other so that's how the basic point of view of this chapter is this okay so this is the on the basis of material now we are going to study the properties of these material like on what basis of the properties like what type of properties you can think and you can keep in your mind while separating the material from each other exactly so should i start okay so first of all it's about appearance like student appearance like how they are looking or how they are appearing to your eyes so that is the appearance students 
exactly now appearance how we can say that on the basis of appearance for example student like if you remember this example this girl example so you can see that all of these bottles are appearing same to each other their appearance is same that is why she is keeping all of these these bottle in one box so you can say that on the basis of appearance like how the material is looking like you can separate the material from each other and you can keep them in different different boxes for example student like i have given you the example like when you are shifting your house so there are clothes okay so all the clothes are having same type of appearance e exactly they are having different different de designs but the clothes are clothes not so you can keep all of the clothes together so that's a student on the basis of their appearance you can uh, classify the material that okay it is a cloth fine and uh, this is your book because both are having different appearance even though in the case of the clothes if i ask you that which one is the which one is the wearing cloth like the cloth which you can wear and which is the towel exactly so you can say ma'am on the basis of their appearance that the towel is having some kind of some kind of you can say uh, wearing clothes are very different from the towel exactly towel is having some kind of thick stuff whereas wearing material are somewhat thin somewhat thick but the towels are having thick stuff exactly so that's how on the basis of their appearance you can say that these are the clothes uh, or these are the things you are separating so that is the appearance students okay and you can see all of the example in around like around yourself according to the appearance like by looking on the object by seeing that okay the appearance of this particular material is similar to each other and that's how you are separating them fine okay now luster now what's the meaning of luster do you know what's the luster is so the luster means students shininess shiny material the material which gives so much of shine so we call it as the luster material or the shiny material like in this picture you can see it is a diamond and you can also say that the diamond is a very lustrous in nature that it will exhibit so much of shininess in the presence of the light when the light put, like you can see when the light uh, fall on the diamond so it start shining you can see so much of luster is there so that's how student you can differentiate the material on the basis of their lusterness and on the basis of their dullness exactly like you can see that the diamond is very luster in nature but if i talk about wood have you ever seen that the wood is also giving some kind of shininess when the when the uh, light is fallen on it exactly no so the wood is a kind of the material which is having the dull appearance so that's why student on the basis of the shininess and on the basis of the dullness you can separate the material exactly for example student color uh, if i talk about color only okay uh that it now in the color what happened it will come in the category of the dark and dull not luster because colors don't even though give luster so that's a student dark and dull so if i talk about red so red color is very dark in nature whereas if i talk about dull so it's like student if i talk about baby pink color so like a pink color which is very light so you'll say ma'am it is dark one and it is dull one okay so that's how on the basis of the lusterness and on the basis of the dullness you can separate the material fine for example diamond and wood fine even though if i take the example of diamond and leaves or gold uh, gold diamond all of these things are very lustrous in nature that they give shine even though uh, students for example what else can be taken in the example of dullness that is the wood leaves and even the cushion covers and all of these things where they they start shining exactly no so on the basis of the lusterness and on the basis of the dullness you can also separate the material and i have already told you what is the luster luster is the shiny material which gives shines and the dull material is those type of material which don't give shine okay which do not shine okay so that's the that's the another type of property on the on with the basis of that you can separate the material so first is the appearance that how the material is looking like and see student appearance like luster can be a part of appearance exactly because if it is giving the shiny so we are just looking at it and we are finding out that okay it is shiny in nature so that's how you can say that the luster can be a part of appearance maybe this question can arise in your mind 
that ma'am luster can be a part of appearance so yeah i can say that the luster and the dullness both are the part of the appearance that they are just looking like that na that one is the shiny one and one is not the shiny one one is dull one so that's so by looking it at by looking their appearance you are telling that ma'am yes it is the shiny one okay now the third type of property is hardness that we talk about that whether which type of material is hard in nature and which type of material is soft in nature so the hardness student we can say we are having two type of object hard object and the soft object exactly if i ask you what could be the hard object so the hard objects are those type of object which you can't can't break easily okay and the soft is like that which you can damage exactly not about breaking can damage easily that is the soft material so we can say the hard material are having the more hardness whereas the soft materials are having the less hardness both are having the hardness it's not so about that any if we this toy you can see this toy is soft in nature but exactly if you try to tear it out so it's not like that ki immediately it is going to be tear out it is also having some kind of hardness but it's just that the soft materials are having the less hardness but the hard material are having the more hardness for example you can see one stones that the picture of stones is there and if i ask you to take the knife and start cutting the stone so will you be able to cut the stone exactly no because it is very hard in nature and even though if i ask you to break it down you can't because it is hard material same thing with this pen if i ask you to break it down like this you can't but yes exactly if you take <laughs> one big stone so you can put it up and you will try so definitely it is going to be break down but if you are just applying your physical force like not any very high force and it is not going to be break down so you can say that yes it is a hard material for example stones and now this is the teddy bear okay and if i ask you to again take a knife and start cutting it so what will happen exactly it is going to be cut down because it is the soft material so that was student the material which can be break down easily or you can say that which can be uh, what we can say cut down easily or even those student one property is also that that is the compress property compressible so my dear student compressible means the material which you can compress easily compress means you know na that if a uh, sponge kind of thing which when we have sponge and when you try to press it so it got compressed exactly so that is the type of the compressibility we can say so the material which can easily compress so what type of material they are soft material and the material which cannot easily compress so they are hard material exactly so that's how student so that's how you can say that one is the hard and one is the soft for example student if i give you one iron box and i will ask you to compress it just try the force and a compresses you can't because it is hard in nature so it is not going to be compressed but this is a toy and if i ask you to compress it so you can do some, like anything with it exactly so that's how student the material which can break down easily which can be cut down easily which can be compressed down easily so we call them as the soft material because their hardness is less and if i talk about that which can oh sorry sorry which can't break down easily which can't we call them as the hard material because their hardness is more and if i talk about soft so it's like when we when we can compress it easily and like cut down them easy so we can say them that they, they are the soft material and they are having less hardness so that's a student hardness is very one important property on the basis of what you can exactly separate out material hai na if i give you laptop and like so many of the list are there so if i give you uh, for example laptop is there some wood material is there toy is there cushion is there okay car is there so if i ask you which one of them is the hard material and which one of them is soft material so you will say ma'am laptop 
wood and card they are the hard material and the toy and the cushion these two are the soft material because now you know that the laptop wood and card can't be break down easily can't be cut down easily but the toy and cushion can be so that's how on the basis of the hardness you can separate out material so it's like first is the appearance the substance which is looking similar to each other second lusterness and the dullness third is the hardness okay it's not like that i'm telling you again that the soft material and is not have any hardness they have hardness but is just like their strength like their hardness is very less like if as i told you na like you have to just apply very small kind of pressure or something like that and you can easily do it so this is hardness student now solubility okay now solubility is somewhat important ha huh? see student first of all what you understand by solubility so my dear student solubility means that the yes yes my dear students i am here only and we are just continuing with it so yeah so i was talking about solubility so exactly student the material which can be soluble in nature that means which can mix easily with any other type of material so we can say it is soluble in nature and some of the material which do not soluble so that's how you can differentiate on that type of material on the basis of their solubility that with whether they are properly soluble or they are less soluble or not soluble so we are having three cases students oh just a second <laughs> i'm so sorry yeah i'll tell you see we are having three type of material student that some of them are completely soluble that uh, we don't find anything after when we mix them some are partially soluble okay and some of them are uh, like incomplete like not soluble so i can write down them as insoluble only so my dear student as you can see in these two difs which were we looking at so yes you can see here that in this first picture this is a coin okay this is a coin and when you are adding the water over it so it is not going to be soluble can you see that the water that it is going to be mixed with it exactly no and you can also do this thing in your home like you can put like you can take some of the water and you can add the coin in it so definitely you can see that the coin is not going to be uh, soluble in that so that's how student it is the insoluble type of material coin is a type of insoluble material but as you can see in this picture in this second picture okay so you can see just a second yes that this person is taking this salt and he is adding this salt into this glass so this is the salt and this is the water okay so my dear student you can do this thing at your home also like you can take one glass of water and you can add either the salt or i or sugar and you can easily see when you stir it that it is going to be completely soluble in it you can't find out the salt after mixing it with water so you can see that the salt is a kind of uh, kind of substance which is soluble in nature that when it is going to mix with the water so you can't find out that whether where the salt gone goes exactly so that's a student we are having some of the material which are soluble in nature but we are having some of the material which are not soluble in nature for example if i try to solve if i try to mix this pen with the water so do you realize that it is going to be mixed with it exactly no if i ask you to mix a uh, what can i say 
okay salt sugar has been done even though like student like there are some other kind of material as well for example juice if i ask you to mix the juice with the water so exactly juice is going to be mixed with it with the water so that's how student the substance which are soluble in nature which are not soluble in nature so that's how on the basis of their solubility you can tell that whether it is the material is soluble or not okay and partially soluble yes some things are completely soluble example salt and sugar something are not soluble in nature like they are not going to be soluble at any cost so it's like that student uh, coin is there pen is there your laptop and so many things are there which is not soluble in water but we are having so many things which are soluble in water as well so that's how on the basis of that you can classify the material but if i talk about partially soluble so these are type of the material which are half soluble and half insoluble for example student if i talk about sand okay so what happens student that the sand is having some kind of uh, uh, stones as well small small particles but sand also contains some kind of dirt so when you add that sand into the water so what you will observe due to the dirtness of that sand the water is going to be dirty exactly that means dust particles are going to be soluble but the stone part and the other part when you kept it after like for some time so what you will see that the sand is going to be settled down at the bottom you will not find out that the sand is completely soluble so that's how you can say that these type the material which are partially soluble in nature okay so we are you can do these experiments at your home and you can also tell me that mom that we are having di different different example with us so that's a student on the basis of these properties you can separate out the group of the materials exactly like the appearance is there shininess dullness is there hardness is there solubility is there so if i give you a group of materials on the basis of these properties you can easily classify that mom coin is not soluble so i'm keeping it in this box which is for the insoluble one and the salt is soluble so i'm keeping it in that box so that's how student on the basis of the solubility that how the material is going to be mixed with another material for example water so we can say that okay so these are the properties on the basis of that you can find out the uh, what i can say sort like you can sort your materials and it will be very easy for you after knowing all of these properties exactly if i give you group of material in which some some of them are having shiny part and some of them are very dull in nature so you can easily identify if i give you some material which are having hardness and which are very which are soft in nature so you can easily identify that ma'am i can't break this very easily so it would be considered as the hard one ma'am i can break it very easily so i am considering as the soft one hai na same with the solubility so that's how student you can use these properties and you can classify all of these fine and i hope you got all of these points exactly students and my dear students even though after listening all of these things and watching this video if any question comes to your mind you can write your question over the forum over the private forum as well as on the public forum and you will get your answer and yes keep studying and keep continuing with your chapter and just go with the flow okay and thank you so much student for watching my video and yes please keep learning from maskayetin Thank you